All right, so I'd like to go through example number six from our student note packet. All right, this is a uh, kinematics question. All right, dealing with a motorcycle and a car. You can read the question there. We've got the motorist traveling with a constant velocity, passing a, a, a policeman, and the policeman then is on a motorcycle and is gonna start off in pursuit. Right? So there's not a lot of information given to us here. Right? But let's go ahead and write down what we have and see if we can figure out what to do here. It does say how much time elapses before the officer catches up with the car. Okay? So, you know, we, we, we're going to have to figure out what is the connection between those two things. So let's, we've got the car and we've got the officer. Right? So, uh, the car we know has an initial velocity of 15 meters per second and it has a final velocity of 15 meters per second. It does say that it's a constant velocity, so we're going to assume that's the case for the whole thing. Uh, now that means that the acceleration is 0 meters per second squared. Now it doesn't really give me any other information there, does it? All right. Um, though I do know that I want to know the time before the officer catches up. So I know that I want to connect time in with this somehow. All right. Now let's see what the officer has for us. So the officer uh, is starting. It says he's, the officer is at rest. He's sitting at the school crossing sign. And so his initial velocity is going to be zero. Uh, it tells us that he has, he's going to have a constant acceleration of 3.0 meters per second squared. Um, and, and then again, we're looking for the amount of time until he catches up, all right? Now, the, the thing that's important here is that it's not just the time that has to be equal. What else has to be equal when they catch up, when the officer catches up to the car? Well, the position is gonna have to be the same as well. Now, if we look into this, it doesn't really say where they are initially, right? But we're gonna assume that initially that the car is passing the school crossing sign. It does kind of label that as zero here. So we're gonna say that its initial position is zero. The same thing for the officer. The officer is sitting by that school crossing sign. So its initial position is gonna be zero. Its final position is unknown, but the final position is gonna to have to be the same. So these two t's are ha gonna have to be the same and these two x's are gonna have to be the same, right? That way they're at the same place at the same time, okay? So now at this point I need to figure out which equation to use, right? Now I've got three kinematics equations and I'm looking at them and, and see here's the thing, I don't know the speed of the officer. I don't know his final speed. Right, So I don't really want to use an equation for the officer that has final speed in it because that's going to be another variable. I've already got t and x, right, which are obviously important to this question, but um, I, 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 it's going to be difficult to get that v, right? So I'm going to try to write an equation that has these other variables in it without needing to bring the v in. The car, you know, it's tempting to use that uh, the, the Vx equals Vx naught plus Axt because it's such a simple equation. But the problem is we already know that, right? You put zero in for acceleration and the initial velocity is going to be equal to the final velocity, right? That's, that's not helpful. I get the same thing on the V squared equals V squared uh, equation, which is a, another one that we use often. Okay, so really, when I look at those three equations, and I'm trying to teach you how to approach this, right? I want something that's gonna include these variables, and I'm gonna have two different equations, so it's okay to have two variables. So I'm actually gonna go in, and I'm gonna use the second one, the one that looks like this, x equals x naught plus v naught t plus one half a t squared. Right? Now, I didn't put all the x's on there, right? In, in, in the formula packet, it puts little subscript x's, but we know it's all one-dimensional motion. So first, I'm going to do it for the car, okay? So I'm going to put all this information in. So the x is going to be my final x, right? The initial 
x is the initial position, which is at the school crossing, so that's zero. We already got that. Okay, the initial velocity is 15 times the time, which we don't know, plus one half times the acceleration. The acceleration, remember, is zero, so that's actually gonna make it nice times time squared. So all of that right there, because the zero is gonna go away. So for the car, all I have is position equals 15t. All right, now I'm gonna do the same thing here for my friend, the officer, right? So my officer is gonna use the same equation, okay? Again, because I want to make sure that I'm including both the t and the x, and I don't wanna include this final velocity. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and write that equation the way it is, so I've got an x, equals the initial, which again, the initial was zero there, right? Plus the officer's initial velocity. Well, the, well, the officer's initial velocity was zero, right? So that's gonna go away from the officer. So I'm just gonna be left with one half times his acceleration, which is 3.0 times the time squared. And you'll notice that that gives me two equations with the same two variables, and they're actually not that complex. Right, I can do a direct substitution here, right? So I'm gonna put the 15t in for the x, so I'm gonna go 15t is equal to 1 half times 3.0t squared, and I'm gonna solve that. I probably won't even need a calculator to solve this one. This is actually pretty nice. They're being kind to us. All right, so I'm gonna go the 1 half times the 3.0, which is gonna be 1.5t squared, I'm gonna take the 15t and subtract it to the other side because I need the t and the t squared together and equal to zero. So now I'm gonna solve for t, right? And so I'm gonna factor out, uh, what can I factor out? I can definitely factor out the t, right? So let's go ahead and do that. I might be able to do a 1.5 as well, but we'll, we'll just leave it as this. We'll factor out the t. That'll leave me with 1.5t minus 15. Now, obviously, now I've got two places where it's gonna equal zero. One is time zero. I already knew that. They were at the same place. X is the same, the position is the same at time zero. We knew that. So now we're gonna find the other one. At what time, what other time are they gonna be in the same place? That's necessary. They're gonna be in the same place because I assumed the X's were equal when I did that substitution, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and put in that. And so we'll have zero equals 1.5t minus 15. I'll add the 15 to the other side. 1.5t, divide both sides by 1.5, and I get 10 seconds equals the time. Ta-da! I just found letter A. How much time elapses before the officer catches up? All right, so I got time. Now everything else should be easy, right? I can find the uh, final speed of the officer now. That's, that's letter B. What's the officer's speed at that point? Now I've got time. Time is 10 seconds, right? So I can put that in for both of those. Now I can find an equation that has V using V naught, A, T, and possibly X naught, right? I don't want to use the position because I haven't actually solved for that one yet. So I'm going to look at my equations. I see this one right here that's V X equals V naught plus A X T, right? That's going to be nice for the officer because I've got A, I've got time now, and I know the initial velocity was zero. And so I can get that, this is gonna go away, I'm gonna have the final velocity is equal to my acceleration, 3.0 meters per second squared, times the time, which was 10, and three times 10 is 30 meters per second. Notice that one of the seconds cancels out, leaving me with meters per second as my velocity at that point. Now I can get the total distance the officers traveled, right? I can solve for x now. Right? I, I, I can do it by putting it back in the equation, but I've actually already got an equation for the officer. This one right here, right? This guy right here was the position of the officer. And so I can solve that just by putting in my 10 for t, 10 seconds, right? So that's gonna be 100 times three, 300 times a half, x is 150 meters. And that's how long it took him to catch up, was 150 meters. No problem, right? Okay, so great. I'm glad we figured that one out. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and move on to